What's up guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about FTP testing and the different tests that are out there. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Amir. I'm a 37 year old computer scientist in Toronto. My job is to optimize software using machine learning and I hold a PhD in the same area. If you're interested in seeing what I'm doing, feel free to head over to my primary channel as I link here. So I started my cycling journey four years ago at the age of 33 with my first FTP at 185 watts and now I'm at around 280 watts. My sport background is tennis. Actually, I used to be a competitive tennis player and later I became a coach. But ever since I picked up cycling, it has took over every aspect of my life. So let's get into the video now. So in order to get a sense of fitness in cycling, we normally take a cycling fitness test, otherwise known as FTP test. FTP stands for functional threshold power and a term coined by Andy Coggan. In his book, it was defined as the maximum power you can maintain through an hour's effort without fatiguing. So there has been a lot of debates about the definition and the specific terminology of this statement actually, whether or not it refers to an exact one hour duration or a longer steady state activity, probably more than one hour, or how do we define fatiguing here? etc. So all of these require further elaboration and I'm not going to go into detail in this video. But for now, let's use the term FTP for a benchmark to have a snapshot of one cycling fitness for around 60 minutes. As you have guessed right, there are many FTP tests out there and I decided to take them all to satisfy my curious nature and somewhat summarize my finding for you guys here. So without further ado, let's talk about them here. Number one, 20 minutes FTP test. The tests take around an hour with a 30 minute warm up and 20 minute all out effort. The average power resulted by doing the 20 minutes effort then can be and used as an indication of the actual FTP when we multiply that by 95%. Say if you hold 200 watts in your 20 minute test, the estimated FTP would be 190 watts. Number two, eight minute FTP test. So this test takes around an hour with a 28 minutes warm up and then a couple of eight minutes all out effort. There is a 10 minutes you know, recovery between the sets of eight minutes. The average power resulted by doing the two eight minutes effort then can be used as an indication of the actual FTP test. Now this time, instead of 95%, we're gonna take into account 90% of that. Say you did the first eight minutes at 200, after the rest, you did your second 8 minutes as at 210 watts. The average of the two becomes 205. 90% of the actual average will become 184 watts. Number three, RAM test. To estimate the FTP fitness, this test takes around half an hour. It uses gradual step increases in power. So each minute, the intensity increases until it becomes very difficult to sustain and you fail to pedal any longer. This test, unlike the others, needs to be done completely seated to avoid a noisy measurement. A few notes before looking at those results. I made sure I had a light training week. As you can see, I first did a 20 minutes test, followed by a rest day, my RAM test, another rest day, the eight minute test, and a rest day again. And finally, I retook another 20 minute test effort in the final day. I'll let you know the reason why I redid another 20 minute test on the following Saturday. My latest RAM test was 282 watts on November. And since I had a week off for an injury and a few days of having cold, I only managed to pick up the intensity for three weeks prior to the test. So I wasn't having high expectation before going into this test week. All right, so let's take a look at the 20 minute test. First of all, there is an inconsistency between the rest in a wall right before the actual 20 minutes test where Train and Road, the software that I use to do my test, it has it for five minutes. Zwift and also the original paper of Andy Coggin who proposed this test, they mentioned it as 10 minutes. I'll go back at this later in the video. Anyhow, I did feel good even for the first five minute all out, which I hold around 305 watts. After the five minute rest, here goes the actual 20 minutes effort. I had planned for a negative split for which you gradually start increasing your power 
at every five minutes. And then you normally start a bit lower for that because you want to gradually build into the effort. However, after the first 10 minutes, I felt completely exhausted with my legs. And the second 10 minutes were, were some rough times. I went downhill pretty fast after that and I actually glad I held on to it to complete the protocol for the 20 minutes. Overall, I held 266 watts for 20 minutes, which put me down for a 252 watts, which is pretty low as you can see. I know that was disappointing. Morale were low after the test. But I knew I'm comfortable taking ramp test as I've done it multiple times. There is no pacing involved in ramp test, so things should be going smooth and the pain would finish fast. So the result came out and that was a straightforward testing day. Felt a little bit unsure at the beginning of the test, especially not knowing if I had lost like 30 watts after three weeks of not having good intensity work, maybe due to cold or otherwise. But at the end, I did hold 380 watts for the final minute, which estimates my FTP as again around 280 watts. That was such a relief knowing that I am where I was a month ago. Okay, next up, we've got the eight minute test. I knew I had a punchy power. So at least one of the two eight minutes should be a PR for me. Surprisingly, I felt pretty good this day and went all in for the first eight minutes interval. I held around 310 watts, which is an eight minutes personal best for me. And my heart rate was up there at around 192, which is pretty close to my max heart rate at around 195, 196. All was good, right? Now, soon after the 10 minutes rest, the second interval started and I understood what I did to myself on the first interval. Did hold the same power for the first four minutes of the second interval, but I had nothing in the tank. So the, the second went down to 290 from 310, which was 20 watts lower than the first. And as we discussed earlier, for this test, the average of two intervals would be multiplied by 90 minutes. So overall, I had the first one 310, the second one 290, so the average becomes 300 watts, and the estimated FTP is calculated at around 270 watts. Well, at least it was much better than my 20 minutes disastrous this for the days earlier. The next and the final FTP test, which was another 20 minute test. Ever since my failed 20 minutes test on the 31st day, I was thinking about what ifs around the five minute all out effort and that if Zwift versus Trainer Road had different protocols and that that could have been causing certain issues for my FTP test to go this low. So I decided I was gonna do another 20 minutes test again, but this time I'm just gonna do the 20 minute effort itself without having that five minutes all out effort. As you can see in the graph, I only warmed up the leg with the early intervals and did one of the five minutes all out. I had nine minutes rest before the actual effort. I was right, that did help. I managed to hold 290 watts for 20 minutes, which is actually another PR for me for 20 minutes effort, especially indoors when I'm always more susceptible to do lower watts. If you somehow ignore the Coggins original protocol and take into account the 20 minute effort, this would have been estimated as 275 watts, which was higher than my eight minute test and also my first 20 minute test. Don't yell yet, I'll go back at it again. So which FTP testing method is the best? Short and simple answer, None. This might come as a surprise to many, but actually all of the FTP tests are somewhat an estimation of the true threshold. One might work better for one and one might not. Let me characterize this into a table. First, pacing strategy. If you take a look at my 20 minute FTP test, you see a pacing strategy could have played a huge role into obtaining better results. Actually a while ago, I tested a little bit of pacing strategy for this test and I shared my finding in one of those Trainer Roads forum post. I'll leave the link to that post if you wanted to have more information around that test. For instance, you obtain different results by starting from different power. And if you do negative or positive splitting, that also means you are changing the outcome of the final test. Meaning that if you increase or decrease your power from your starting point at each five minute step throughout the 20 minute test. 
For me, I have found that starting my FTP for the first 10 minutes and then increasing the power from 3 to 5% in the final 10 minutes could be a winning strategy. But again, this might not work for everybody. For this category, I choose Ramtis as the winner, as you don't need to bother yourself with the strategies. At each step, you just have to hold the power required for that stage. My second choice would be an 8 minute test, which is a shorter interval than a 20 minutes. And finally, the 20 minute FTP test would be the last choice regarding pacing strategies. Number two, consistency and repeatability. So similar to pacing the strategies, I take the RAM test as the winner. You normally get similar results, maybe within two to 5% margin of fluctuation when taking RAM test every time. Whereas on a longer test, such as a 20 minute test, you fatigue both physically and mentally, and that could play a huge role in the final results. Number three, FTP testing as a workout. So the clear winner in this category is the 20 minute test, followed by an eight minutes, and actually RAM test doesn't or cannot be considered as a workout at all. It's just a test for estimating FTP. Actually, a 20 minute test can be a good workout to stress the legs to do longer all out efforts. Similarly, an eight minute test can be a good long and painful VO2 max workout especially on the second eight minute test. If you don't pace well on the first one, like I did, you'll feel the pain in your body. All right, let's have some final thoughts. Number one, Trainer Road's AI FTP test. If you are a user of Trainer Road, it offers you to avoid testing at all and use the AI FTP test that they have developed recently in the company. I did try to get the AI FTP test and it showed the 287 watts, given my recent history of the training which is around 2.5% higher than what I got in my final RAM test. But I would say as a software engineer, as someone who does machine learning, that the error rate is somewhat acceptable within margin of error. Maybe for a stronger cyclist, a 2.5% translate into more raw power. But for an amateur cyclist like me, who doesn't want to do any testing at all, this could be a stress-free option. Number two, Empirical Cycling's FTP method. Kylie Moore, he has proposed a new method for FTP testing. He is a proponent of a longer version test. He said in his podcast, Empirical Cycling, that depending on the physiology of a cyclist, the amount of anaerobic contribution can play a huge role in getting FTP results for both RAM test, 8 minute, and a 20 minute FTP test. Thus, he suggested a longer test, at least a 40 minute test, as follows. The first 10 minutes of the actual effort, you ramp up from 92% to 95% of the current FTP, 15 minutes at 100% of your current FTP, and finally you do another 15 minutes ramped from 100% to 108% of your FTP. I'll leave the link to the description about the training peak post. Number three, same FTP test, different implementations. I have noticed there are different versions of the same test in different platforms. Let me point out to a few. For 20 minute test, as I mentioned earlier, the original author of the test, Andy Coggin, has suggested a resting period of 10 minutes between the five minute all out and the actual 20 minute effort. But in training road, it is rather short and it's a five minutes rest. Zwift seems to have followed the Andy Coggin's recipe on this one. About RAM test, in Zwift also, you would start all the time at 100 watts and it increases 20 minutes per each step and each step is defined as one minute. However, in Trainer Road, you start at 46% of your FTP and then each step has an increase of 6% in the power required. So you are guaranteed to hit your FTP power always at minute 13 to 14. And here is another nerdy fact about Trainer Road's RAM test. You're always guaranteed to get a new FTP test if you pass the 20 minute barrier. Just put your head down and pedal for another 30 seconds or more when you hit 20 and you've got yourself a new shiny FTP. All right guys, this is the end of this video. There has been a lot of other details that I could have shared, but this would have made the video much longer. So I'll leave those for another video. If you like this kind of content in my channel, let me know by commenting and sharing your thoughts. Maybe let me know your pacing strategy for your test and a kind of test you follow normally. Final word, if this video gets 100 likes, I'll consider doing the actual one hour test as a bonus. If you wanna see the old man suffer for the whole hour, here's your chance. All right guys, thanks for watching. See you in another one.